Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. That's just a test. Okay, so as you can see, um, well, you may not know, but when Queen Mary's Rose Garden, okay, this, oh, oh, yeah, there's, uh, there's live creatures around us. <laughs> Knowing our luck, they're going to jump up while we're here. Knowing my luck. <laughs> Right, no chance, no chance. but anyway, it's Queen Mary's Rose Garden. This in... isn't Queen Mary's. Yeah, yeah, it is. It? Don't correct me, unlike it is Queen Mary's Rose Garden. We're in Regent's Park for sure. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> He's American. We are in Regent's Park, and within Regent's Park, there is Queen Mary's Rose Garden. Oh, hence the. Yes, that's right there and there. Okay. Right. Anyway, she is correct. But this is a nice area. There's a waterfall over here. You can probably hear it. So nicely. And there's this is a live ducks. Live, live ducks, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're on a little island that's yeah. in the middle of a, middle of a the rose garden. Kind of thing, yeah. All right, Canto <coughs> 2, Chapter 7, Text 18. Schedule incarnations of specific functions. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Right, verse 18 Bali Maharaj, who put on his head the water washed from the lotus feet of the Lord did not think of anything besides his promise In spite of being forbidden by his spiritual master the king dedicated his own personal body to fulfilling the measurement of the Lord's third step. For such a personality, even the kingdom of heaven, which he conquered by his strength, was of no value. Papa, Bali Maharaj, by gaining the transcendental favour of the Lord in exchange for his great material sacrifice, was able to have a place in Vaikuntha Loka with equal or greater facilities of eternal enjoyment. Therefore, he was not at all the loser by sacrificing the kingdom of heaven, which he had possessed by his material strength. In other words, when the Lord snatches away one's hard-earned material possessions and favours one with his personal transcendental service for eternal life, bliss and knowledge, such taken away by the Lord should be considered a special favour upon <coughs> such a pure devotee. It's not yeah. easy to see that as a special favour, but... <laughs> <coughs> material possessions however alluring they may be cannot be permanent possessions therefore one has to voluntarily give up such possessions or one has to leave such possessions at the time of quitting this material body <coughs> the same man knows that all material possessions are temporary and that the best use of such possessions is to engage them in the service of the Lord so that the Lord may be pleased with him and award him a permanent place in his Padam Dham. In the Bhagavad Gita 15.5 verses 5 to 7, the Param Dham of the Lord is described as follows. 5 to 6. Oh, 5 to 6, sorry. One who possesses more in this material world, in the shape of houses, land, children, society, friendship and wealth, possesses these things only for the time being. One cannot possess all this illusory paraphernalia created by Maya permanently. Such a possessor is more illusioned in the matter of, self, of his self-realization. Therefore, one should possess less or nothing so that one may be free from artificial prestige. We are contaminated in the material world by association with the free most material nature. Therefore, the more one spiritually advances by devotional service to the Lord, in exchange for his temporary possessions, the more one is freed from the attachment of material illusion. To achieve this stage of life, one must be firmly convinced about spiritual existence and its permanent effects. To know exactly the permanency of spiritual existence, one must voluntarily practice possessing less or only the minimum to maintain one's material existence without difficulty. Mm. One should not create artificial needs. That will help one be satisfied with the minimum. Artificial needs of life are activities of the senses. The modern advancement of civilization is based on these activities of the senses, or in other words, it is a civilization of sensuification. Perfect civilization is the civilization of Atma, or the soul proper. 
The civilized man of sense gratification is on an equal level with the animals because animals cannot go beyond the activities of the senses. Above the senses is the mind. <coughs> the civilization of mental speculation is also not the perfect stage of life because above the mind is the intelligence and the Bhagavad Gita gives us the information of the intellectual civilization. The Vedic literatures give different directions for the human civilization, including the civilization of the senses, of the mind, of the intelligence, and of the soul proper. The Bhagavad Gita primarily deals with the intelligence of man, leading one to the progressive path of civilization of the spirit soul. And Srimad Bhagavatam is the complete human civilization dealing with the subject matter of the soul proper. As soon as a man is raised to the status of the civilization of the soul, he is fit to be promoted to the kingdom of God, which is described in the Bhagavad Gita as per the above verses. Mm. Very powerful uh, purport and some statements there about how possessions are basically temporary anyway, and uh, we either have to give them up uh, in order to take seriously the process of bhakti yoga and spiritual life, or uh, they'll be taken up or taken away anyhow at the uh, at the time of death. So either way, we're going to have to give them up. So mm. in that sense, we we should understand in, in life <coughs> that naturally we should cultivate some detachment mm. from material things because they're going to go away anyhow, and to focus our consciousness on that which is eternal, which is in connection with the soul, with the spirit, with Krishna, then that's a real investment. That's a real investment of our time. And, uh, and certainly those things are everlasting, mm -hmm. as, as it were. Yeah. <coughs> but you have to have got a taste and realization of that spirit. Yeah. Otherwise you don't last long and you is subtly, if not grossly, taking shelter of the material because we all need shelter and we all need assurance and love. I mean, in not terms, people also like things. So, if you don't long term, if you're not you're, you're not maintaining your side and going deeper in this, you do regress and you do go back to that which gave you shelter. Mm. It's dangerous, you know, you've got to remain alert on Very this nice. path. Yes, it's a razor's edge. Yeah. The primary information of the Kingdom of God informs us that there is no need of sun, moon, or electricity, which are all necessary in this material world of darkness. Flying ducks. <laughs> and the secondary information of the Kingdom of God explains that anyone able to reach that Kingdom by adoption of the civilization of the soul proper, or in other words, by the method of Bhakti Yoga, attains the highest perfection of life. One is then situated in the permanent existence of the soul with full knowledge of transcendental loving service of the <coughs> transcendental loving service of for the Lord. Bali Maharaj accepted this civilization of the soul in exchange for his great material possessions and thus became fit for promotion to the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven which he achieved by dint of his material power was considered most insignificant in comparison with the kingdom of God. Those who have attained the comforts of a material civilization made for sense gratification should try to attain the kingdom of God by following in the footsteps of Bali Maharaj, who exchanged his acquired material strength adopting the process of Bhakti Yoga as recommended in the Bhagavad Gita and further explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah, nice purple. Hmm. Text 719. O Narada, you were taught about the science of God and His transcendental loving service by the Personality of Godhead in His incarnation of Hamsa Avatar. He was very much pleased with you due to your intense proportion of devotional service. He also explained unto you lucidly the full science of devotional service, which is especially understandable by persons who are souls surrendered unto Lord Vasudev, the personality of Godhead. <coughs> Purple. 
The devotee and devotional service are two correlative form terms. Unless one is inclined to be a devotee of the Lord, he cannot enter into the intricacies of devotional service. Lord Sri Krishna wanted to explain the Bhagavad Gita, which is the science of devotional service, unto Sri Arjuna, because Arjuna was not only his friend, but a great devotee as well. The whole process is that all living entities being cons constitutionally parts and parcels of the Supreme Living Being, the Absolute Personality of Godhead, have proportionately minute independence of action also. So, the preliminary qualification for entering into the devotional service of the Lord is that one become a willing cooperator with persons who are already engaged Crazy in the, huh? Crazy persons, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, namaste, another thing. Hiya. Yeah. <laughs> Become a willing cooperator, and as such, one should voluntarily cooperate <laughs> with persons who are already engaged in the transcendental devotional service of the Lord. By cooperating with such persons, the prospective candidate will gradually learn the techniques of devotional service and with progress of such learning one becomes proportionately free from the contamination of material association. Such a purificatory process will establish the prospective candidate in firm faith and gradually elevate him to the stage of transcendental taste for such devotional service. Thus, he acquires a genuine attachment for the devotional service of the Lord, and his conviction carries him on to the point of ecstasy just prior to the stage of transcendental love. Now that is some powerful statements about the process of devotional service and how one takes it up and how the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita are revealed and it's basically the process of Shraddha to Prem. <clears throat> and um, also it seems to explain how the idea of a, a mentorship program is required uh, to endorse uh, and endorsed by Srila Prabhupada because it says that thus um, uh, one has to associate with others and assist them and learn and grow and then one makes advancement so like that mm. so thus he acquires a genuine attachment for devotional service and the convictions carries him on to the next stage mm. so like that so then we need to have this um, yeah, connection mm. to someone else who's performing devotional service in order to make advancement like mm. that. such knowledge of devotional service may be divided into two sections namely preliminary knowledge of the nature of devotional service and the secondary knowledge of its execution. Bhagavatam is in relation with the personality of Godhead, his beauty, fame, opulence, dignity, attraction and transcendental qualities which attract one towards him for exchanges of love and affection. There is a natural affinity of the living entity for the loving service of the Lord. This affinity becomes artificially covered by the influence of material association and Shrima Bhagavatam helps one very genuinely remove the artificial covering. Therefore, it is particularly mentioned herein that Shrima Bhagavatam acts like the lamp of transcendental knowledge. Mm. These two sections of, of transcendental knowledge in devotional service become revealed to a person who is a sur soul surrendered unto Vasta. As it is said in the Bhagavad Gita 7.19, such a great soul fully surrendered unto the lotus root of Vasta is very, very rare. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I made a note here that um, it's an interesting point about the potency of the Bhagavatam being mentioned here and how it's like a lamp. But the paragraph seems a bit misplaced because there's no mention of the Bhagavatam in the verse. Although Srila Prabhupada says that particularly mentioned herein that SB acts like a lamp. But if we go back... The verse doesn't explain anything about Bhagavatam acting like a lamp. So it's a, 
interesting. I wonder where that was kind of coming from. <laughs> uh, questions like this. When we studied the Bhagavad, we, we dive deeper, and when we dive deep, there are mysteries and things unfold to us as we inquire. Text 20. <coughs> well, it does say in the translation, in the just text. like the light in the darkness, but it doesn't um, have it oh, in the... Oh, Deepam. Okay, yeah, very nice. yeah. There you go. But it doesn't have it... Yeah, so it says... Gyanam, knowledge, cha, also Bhagavatam, the science of God and his devotional service. Atma, the self, satatva, with all details, deepam, just like mm. the light and mm. the darkness. So why Yet he, that which, you know, didn't translate like that. He also <laughs> explains to you lucidly, I guess lucidly, the full science. Lucidly is like compared to, it means very lucid is something um, clear. lucid is clear yeah so that's like a word that could be related to it. yeah nice point thank you that's great i'm gonna make make a note here okay brilliant so was did i read that or did you read that i did okay so um let me just uh you want me to read while you do yeah, go ahead. Tw text 20 as the incarnation of manu the lord became the descendant of the Manu dynasty and ruled over the miscreant kingly order, subduing them by his powerful willpower. And deterred in all circumstances, his rule was characterized by his glorious fame, which spread over the three lokas and above them to the planetary system of Satya Loka, the topmost in the universe. We already discussed the incarnations of Manu in the first canto. In one day of Brahma, there are 14 Manus changing one after another. Mm. In that way, there are 420 Manus in a month of Brahma and 5,040 Manus in one year of Brahma. Brahma lives for 100 years according to his calculation and as such, <coughs> there are 504,000 5, Manus in the jurisdiction of one Brahma. They are innumerable Brahmas and all of them live only during one breathing period of Mahavishnu. So we can just imagine how the incarnations of the Supreme Lord work all over the material worlds, which comprehend only one-fourth of the total energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nice explanation of how many Manvantars there are, and then it's 504,000 Manus, sorry, not Manvan, yeah, Manvantars, Manu. Manu, Man yeah. Um, in the jurisdiction of one Brahma. <coughs> so in the life of one Brahma, there's 504,000 Manus. But the life of Lord Brahma is just one breath of Mahavishnu. <gasps> and that's, uh, so it's really uh, crazy. Phenomenal. The experience of time, according mm. to the Vedic teachings, mm -hmm. is far beyond that. I mean, we think one year, a hundred years is a long time, and mm. it's nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. And the comparison is just like a some insects they live for a day or a week and uh, but they go through the whole life cycle they come into being they stay for some time produce some byproducts dwindle and eventually die and um, so they have an experience of life but next to a human then uh, or a duck uh, next to a human then uh, that it's nothing you know it's just blink of an eye so mm -hmm. it's like that for us humans there are beings that are much higher above us in their existence and their lifespan is much mm. greater we have no idea okay <clears throat> and then the end of that this uh, purport the manvantara incarnation chastises all the miscreant rulers of different planets with as much power as that of the supreme personality of godhead who punishes the miscreants with his wheel weapon. The Manvantar incarnations disseminate the transcendental glories of the Lord. It's interesting because we don't often hear much about the Manus. Mm. Uh, of course, in different pastimes, uh, uh, the appearance of Lord Kapiladev, we hear about um, Swayambhuva Manu, I think, and his wife, uh, Sachivrat, I think is her name, and how they bring Devahuti. Um, we hear a little bit about them, but here it explains how they have dominion more or less over everything and everyone and they're kind of the enforcers of everything and I, I guess I would presume that means also the Davids because uh, their Manvantars are like or, or at least over over men I guess but 
anyway, interesting topic to mm. discuss. Okay, I think we'll make this the last best. Yeah, city very city. cold. <laughs> and we're sitting on rocks. rocks. <laughs> Text 21. The Lord in his incarnation of Don Vantari very quickly cures the diseases of the ever diseased living entity simply by his fame personified. And only because of him do the demigods achieve long lives. Thus the personality of Godhead becomes ever glorified. He also exacted a share from the sacrifices and it is he, he and it is he only who inaugurated the medical science or the knowledge of medicine in the universe. As stated in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, everything emanates from the ultimate source of the personality of Godhead. It is therefore understood in this verse that medical science or knowledge of medicine was also inaugurated by the personality of Godhead in his incarnation of Damvantari. And go. thus the knowledge is recorded in the Vedas. The Vedas are the source of all knowledge and thus knowledge in medical science is also there for the perfect cure of the diseases of the living entity. The embodied living entity is diseased by the very construction of his body. The body is the symbol of diseases. The disease may differ from one variety to another, but disease must be there just as there is birth and death for everyone. So by the grace of the personality of Godhead, not only are diseases of the body and mind cured, but also the soul is relieved of the constant repetition of birth and death. Mm. The name of the Lord is also called Bhavu Sadi, or the source of curing the disease of material existence. Wow. <laughs> yeah, nice name for a doctor. Bhavu Sadi. <coughs> okay, so that's us... Uh, Concluded mm. on a freezing cold morning. Yeah, on, uh, Duck Island. On Duck Island, <laughs> in the uh, middle of Regents Park, and uh, we thank you all very much for joining in. Yes. And uh, as we continue to read through the Bhagavatam, yes, we're here still in Second Canto, Part One. Nearly finished. And uh, we had an amazing marathon distributing books. But if you're still interested, we are happy to help to supply and provide books in any way that we can. Thank you all very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.